Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or if it's your first time here, welcome. Before I get started with today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about my YouTube channel itself and some things that are upcoming. I've recently joined Patreon and Patreon is a way for you to be able to support my channel. There's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Check it out. I'm starting off with a very basic membership. The basic membership will give you recognition on my channel, but I've got some really, really good things that are in store for this channel and on Patreon in the future. So stay tuned for that. They are going to be absolutely fantastic and there's going to be a lot more interaction and interactivity between me and the viewers on different levels. So that's coming very, very soon. But just to get started, I've got this basic membership that I've created that's going to allow you to get recognition on my channel. Check it out below. Today's video is all about seat selection, which is a very, very common theme in all of my videos when I'm flying. But specifically, today I'm only going to talk about sitting on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the aircraft. Which one should you choose? Now, when people choose their seats when they first purchase their ticket online, they're looking at different factors. I think that the primary consideration of most passengers out there today is comfort. My previous video where I'm talking into the camera talks about how I am not paying for a seat. I am paying for a window because flying for me is all about the experience of flying. I'm not very focused on the in-cabin service. I'm not very focused on the seat pitch or the tray table, how far down it goes, how close it is to you. Not really important things to me because I love aviation and I am there for the flying experience and of course to get to my destination wherever that may be. And if you watch my channel a lot, you know very often I'm flying on the same aircraft type, uh, often on the same routes over and over again. So there's really not too much to report on regarding the interior of the aircraft, but there's so much to talk about regarding the exterior of the aircraft. And even if you're flying on different routes all the time, I want to encourage placing a focus on the view outside of the window rather than having this inward facing view about what's going on inside the cabin regarding the seat, the service, the flight attendants, the lighting, the in-flight entertainment system. But consider thinking outside of the aircraft, what's going on outside the aircraft and that you are experiencing the miracle and the joy of flight. And there's so much more that's happening outside that can really, really bring your flight to a whole different level. Now, specifically in the past, I talked about getting seats on an aircraft where the windows are very well aligned. Uh, will you have two windows? Will you have one window? Or is there no window at all? Of course, you should not sit there. Uh, but what I really want to focus today on is what side of the aircraft should you sit on, the right-hand side or the left-hand side? So once you decide which side of the aircraft to sit on, the right or the left, then you can go ahead and look at some of the other determining factors of seat selection, window alignment, is there a window missing, etc. But today it's just about the right side or the left-hand side. And when I talk about choosing a seat on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, there's really one big factor that comes into play. What will the view be on that particular side of the aircraft? You want to pick a seat where you are being rewarded with the best views. You are paying a lot of money for your airline ticket and you don't want to see the view of basically nothing when everybody on the other side of the aircraft is experiencing something marvelous. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to choose the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the aircraft for the best views. This will make your flight worthwhile, believe me. Now, what I'm going to mention in general really applies to all aspects of flying and the most important factor that you need to consider when you decide if you are going to be sitting on the right-hand side or the left-hand side of the airplane is the wind. Always get a forecast before you fly. Which direction is the wind going to be coming from? Because aircraft will always land into or depart into the wind. Now, it doesn't have to be a direct headwind coming directly from the aircraft right onto the nose of the aircraft. It could be offset several degrees. It could be offset even close to 90 degrees. But there is always some sort of, or almost always, some sort of headwind component that aircraft will always fly into when landing or taking off. This helps with the flight itself. Rarely will aircraft actually take off or land with wind coming from behind them, pushing them along. 
Aircraft operate best when the wind is a headwind. So you should always consider the wind when making your seat selection because the wind is going to be the determining factor of which runway you are going to land on. And regarding resources, I'm only going to mention two resources to you. They are completely free. The first one will be a website of your choice that shows wind direction, a wind forecast website. Not all weather websites may show you the wind direction, so you'll want to find a website that shows you the wind direction. Some websites are very generic, just saying that the wind uh, at the time of your landing will be coming from the northeast. You want to find something as specific as possible. One website that I really like to use is windfinder.com. Windfinder shows you a map and you can zoom in to, let's say, the airport that you'll be landing at to see which direction the wind will be coming from at the time of your arrival. Now, of course, you can only do this maybe a few days before your flight because it's very difficult to predict the exact wind conditions when it comes to, let's say, a month in advance. But if you have the opportunity to select your seat based upon the forecasted wind direction at the time of your arrival or departure, I highly recommend you go ahead and visit a website that gives you wind information. The other website that you should use, which is a completely free resource, requires zero downloading, is Google Maps Satellite View. Bring up an airport. Look at the airport that you'll be flying to or from and check out the runway configuration. Which way do the runways go? And align the wind with the particular runways to get an idea of which runways the airport will be using for all operations for either takeoff and landing. Now, I'll give an example of an airport where it's super, super easy to figure out which runway you'll be landing or taking off on, and that is the Atlanta International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia. All runways at this airport face the same direction. There are a total of five runways and they all head east-west. So if the wind is coming from the east, you'll definitely be landing to the east. And if the wind is coming from the west, you'll be landing to the west. Now, take a look at the runways itself. Again, using Atlanta as an example, since all the runways head in the same exact direction. And draw a line from each of the runways. Take a look at that line. Extend it, let's say, 20 miles or so. And then take a look at what is on either side of the line. And depending on which direction you're going, whether you're taking off or landing, is there anything in particular that you want to see on that particular side of the aircraft? Then choose a seat on that side of the aircraft. It's as simple as that. Another perfect example of an airport where all the runways head in the same exact direction is the Los Angeles International Airport. They've got a total of four runways, and just like Atlanta, they all head east-west. Now, predominantly in Los Angeles, the wind is coming from the west, heading toward the east, so it's coming from the Pacific Ocean onto mainland USA, which calls for a westerly flow of all operations at that airport quite, quite often. So if you're going to be landing at Los Angeles, chances are very, very high that the final approach course is going to be from the east to the west. And the airport is not that far from the Pacific Ocean, so there really isn't much past the airport. Same thing when you're departing Los Angeles International Airport, you are probably going to be taking off to the west, but you should always check the wind because sometimes airports like Los Angeles run in what's called reverse operations. And you may actually have an opportunity to have a rare takeoff towards the east, and there will be a lot to see below rather than just the Pacific Ocean at a low altitude. So make sure you check the forecast for the time that you'll be landing or departing at any particular airport to see exactly what is out there. So those are two very basic airports. Now, there is also a couple of other factors that you should consider for, let's say, those two airports when deciding which side of the aircraft to sit on. And that is, well, you do have to approach the airport from certain directions. And what will your view be at a higher altitude, let's say below 10,000 feet as you get closer to the airport? What I recommend you do is take a look at some flight trackers out there and look at the paths of arriving flights based upon the runway configuration and determine if there's anything further out from the airport that you want to see. Generally, when you're coming into a particular runway, there are two things that you can do. You can either fly straight in or you can fly around the airport, past the airport, turn around and then land. And that is actually considered the downwind leg, when you are flying in the opposite direction of landing at a higher altitude before you descend, turn and land. 
Take a look at flight patterns to see exactly which view is better on the right-hand side or the left-hand side when you're on the downwind leg because the downwind leg may be more important to you. Now, the downwind leg is especially important when selecting seats coming into certain airports like LaGuardia Airport, which has two runways that intersect just like this. So, how do you know what runway you'll be landing on and how do you know what the view is going to be? Well, the wind, let's say, in New York City changes quite often, so LaGuardia Airport is always using different runways. And let's take an example of the wind coming out of the south, 180 degrees. If the wind is coming out of the south, chances are very, very high that you're going to land on a runway that heads in a southerly direction. And since none of the runways actually head due south, you want to pick a runway where you would at least get some sort of headwind component to determine what the landing runway is. And there are two runways at LaGuardia Airport that you can look at on a map to see exactly where the wind is coming from and what runways would provide slight headwinds. Those are runways 22 and runway 13. At LaGuardia, one runway is used for departures, one runway is used for arrivals. If you take a look at the airport itself, what runway do you think would be more efficient to use for arrivals or departures? The answer is runway 22 is generally used for arrivals and runway 13 is used for departures. Runway 13 has a larger staging area where more aircraft can actually wait if there are any delays. And if aircraft were to depart on runway 22 and land on runway 13, they'd actually have to cross runway 13 two times. Once on a parallel taxiway to get to the runway and the second time during their takeoff roll. So that would cause air traffic conflicts and airports try to be as efficient as possible. So if the wind is coming out of the south, runway 22 is probably going to be your landing runway. And LaGuardia is very, very close to Manhattan. However, the final approach to runway 22 at LaGuardia really doesn't come close to Manhattan. Well, this is where you want to focus on the downwind leg. Let's say if you're coming from the south or the west, which is the majority of arrivals to LaGuardia, which side of the airplane would you want to sit on? Well, eventually you're going to wind up on runway 22 coming straight in from the northeast to the southwest because runway 22 has a heading of 220 degrees, which is to the southwest. But in order to get there, you need to fly on the downwind leg. Will you fly to the east of LaGuardia or the west of LaGuardia? Well, it depends upon the exact wind. So if the wind is coming from 180 degrees, that provides a headwind component for runway 22 as well as runway 13. And if a runway 13 aircraft takes off, it becomes airborne in the airspace to the east of LaGuardia. Therefore, downwind legs, aircraft that are approaching the runway from the other direction, will fly to the west of LaGuardia. And when they do that, quite often, those aircraft fly up the Hudson River before making a right-hand turn to land on runway 22. And if you're on the right-hand side of the aircraft, you'll get really, really good Manhattan views. Now, if the wind is coming from the south, but has a component that would favor runway 31 and runway 22, so that would be runway 31 for departures and runway 22 for arrivals, you want to take a seat on the left-hand side of the airplane. Because for that approach, runway 31 departures will take off in the airspace to the west of LaGuardia, which means that you'll fly your downwind leg to the east of LaGuardia, and Manhattan and the airport will be on the left-hand side of the airplane before you circle back around and land on runway 22. That's one of the more complex ones, but I use that as an example because, as you know if you watch my channel often, that's an airport that I fly into very, very often, so I'm very familiar with it. But there are other airports that have intersecting runways where there are similar scenarios. I'm going to use DCA in Washington, D.C. as an example. There are three runways at that airport, and if you take a look at an airport diagram, and if you're on a larger aircraft, you're probably only going to use the larger runway. Now, this airport is situated right on the Potomac River. So aircraft will either fly northbound on the Potomac or southbound on the Potomac. And this one's actually pretty easy to figure out which side of the aircraft to sit on. If the winds are coming from the south, you're going to want to sit on the left-hand side of the aircraft because you'll probably be flying down the Potomac River towards runway 19, the longer runway. And if you're flying southbound on the Potomac River and the airport is situated slightly past downtown Washington, D.C., you're going to get a spectacular view on the left-hand side of the airplane. 
Now, if you're on the right-hand side of the airplane, depending on your preferences, you will see other things like the Pentagon. So it really depends on what you want to see. I know for me, I want to sit on the left-hand side of the aircraft whenever the wind is coming from the south out of DCA. And for some airports like DCA, I will automatically, by default, choose a seat on the left-hand side of the airplane just in case we do fly that approach. Now, you can also approach DC Airport from the south and fly northbound up the Potomac River. And there are views, of course, on either side. And whatever view is going to be better for you is the side you should select. And of course, this is from the wind is coming directly from the north. But for me, this airport, the approach is all about coming in from the north heading southbound when the wind is out of the south. So I make sure I choose a seat all the time on the left-hand side of the airplane. And even at an airport like DCA, if you're coming, let's say, from the south, flying up the Potomac River, and you're approaching from the north, let's say you're on a flight from Boston or New York to DCA, you will have to fly past the airport, back around, and fly up towards the airport to land. So you may want to choose your seat based upon the downwind leg once again. If you're coming from the Northeast, chances are that you'll fly past the airport with the city of Washington, D.C. off your right-hand side as you fly past it, then turn right, and then follow the Potomac River northbound to the airport. You see, there's all these different things you can think of when actually flying to a particular airport. Now, for other people, you may want to consider things like the in route phase of flight. What I highly recommend that you do before you take a flight is check out flight paths of aircraft. What routes do they normally fly? Are you going to be on a flight, let's say, that's going to be leaving Las Vegas or Southern California, headed towards the east or the northeast? And will you fly over Grand Canyon? And typically, what side of the aircraft is the Grand Canyon on? Will it be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the aircraft, if that's what's important to you? And choose a seat accordingly. So my general rules will apply to every single airport that you fly into, but there are, of course, exceptions. And of course, things do get more complicated as we talk about approaching the airport from a higher altitude. Now, there are some airports where you may get intimidated by the size of the airport and the number of runways that they have. For example, Chicago O'Hare has a ton of runways and they basically head in all different directions. However, if you take a look at the wind conditions, you can get a sense of which general direction you'll be landing in. And in Chicago, despite the fact that they have so many runways, not all of them are used at the same time. And quite often, they'll be using two approaches to two particular runways simultaneously that are parallel to each other. So if the wind is coming out of the west, for example, you know that you're going to land to the west. If the wind is coming out of the east, you'll know that you're going to land to the east. If you determine that you're going to land to the west, I recommend a seat on the left-hand side of the aircraft because after you fly over Lake Michigan, you'll get some stunning views of downtown Chicago. It is a great thing to see from up there. Now, of course, I've only mentioned airports in the United States because that's what I'm most familiar with, but this applies to any airport in the world. Whether the scene on the approach has to do with a large city, a valley, a mountain, a body of water, take a look at the extended center lines of the runway. Draw a line from the runway all the way out, figure out which direction the wind is coming from, and chances are you're going to land on that runway. And no matter where you are in the world, pick a seat on the side of the airplane that gives you the better view. So many people say things like, well, if I'm flying to this airport, I should sit on this side of the airplane. Don't listen to any of that because every runway goes in two directions. And if you don't land in one direction, you're going to land in the opposite direction. And you may not get the view that you had planned for. And if you're on that runway that you didn't really want to land on, at least you can choose a seat on a side of the aircraft where you'll get the better view. Again, always consider the downwind leg. The fact that if you're coming from the opposite direction of landing, that you're probably going to have to circle around the airport. And quite often that means flying over the city. Again, look at flight paths to see exactly what the patterns are at those particular airports, if they're left turns or right turns. And as I mentioned, LaGuardia can be quite complex depending on the wind conditions. But for other airports, it can be much more simple. They're not in large metropolitan airspace areas like LaGuardia is. So I hope I've encouraged you to kind of ditch the notion of just having an inward facing view of flying. Take a look at what's outside and that will make the flying experience so much more enjoyable. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a lot more great things coming for this channel. And if you have any questions about any specific airports, leave them in the comments section below and I'd be more than happy to help you. 
In the future, I plan on offering more services where I can be your personal concierge to help you through a flight to make the most enjoyable and satisfying experience possible. Getting there, of course, is half the fun. Thanks so much for watching this video, everybody. If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to click on the subscribe button below. Hit the bell button and hit the like button because you don't want to miss out when I come out with more videos like this. I'm going to be alternating between videos of flying and talking to get more understanding of the how and why. And of course, 100% of my flight videos are completely narrated, giving you a situational understanding of where you are and why we are so that we can get safely to our destination. See you soon.